Hello and welcome to our next video. In this lesson, we're going to be building our first Sudoku program. So the Sudoku programs are intended for you to master skills and as an extra additional task at hand. So as we go through each Sudoku program, we'll be making some jumps as we start working with the actual code. It will help you to continue to grow from the section that we're on here, chapter one or section one or week one, however you might refer to it. This first section, we learned about printing and creating programs. So here, what we're going to do is actually print out the Sudoku grid. So go ahead and get yourself a project going and get the files for Sudoku grid and Sudoku grid two. Now Sudoku grid is going to be very straightforward and there should not be anything about it that you don't understand at this point, but it shows you that you can create a Sudoku grid just by some separate print line statements. And again, I encourage you to play around with it a little bit instead of maybe print line use printf and start working with that. But let's go ahead and make the code big and run it so we can see Sudoku grid running. And here we can see Sudoku grid runs and of course it prints out just like we expected. Now these are just numbers, they don't make any sense and obviously our game isn't doing anything at this point. But that's okay, we don't really know how to program enough to do the game. What we're doing is we're starting the building blocks and here we are again, learning from the ground up and mastering the skills so that when we do go to make the big program, we won't be making so many jumps that we don't understand what we're doing. But now let's make a jump, right after I say that. Sudoku Grid 2. Okay, so when we're programming, one thing we wanna do is look for patterns. If we see a pattern, we want to make our code more efficient if we can. If you think back to the putting it all together for this section, if you watched through that video, we had a bunch of strings that were being reused in multiple places and wasn't very efficient. If one of those strings needed to be changed, we'd have to change it in multiple places. Well, as programmers, we're going to look for things like that and fix it. And right now we don't really have too many tools in our kit to actually do that, but we're going to make a little jump here and I'm going to show you a couple things and this will help us actually transition into next week's lesson on variables. What we see here is we have a repeating pattern, number, colon, number, colon, number, space, pipe, space, number, colon, number, colon, number, space, pipe, space, number, colon, number, colon, number. So we see we have three sets of numbers with colons in between each number, a space after that, and a pipe with a space on either side of it to separate the three grids. And then after three lines, we have a set of dashes to match the number of spaces that would make our square grid square. And we repeat that same thing three times. Well, if you note, we have two patterns, a string with a, pi a space, a pipe, a space, another string, a space, a pipe, another space, another string. And each one of those strings can be re represented as percent s colon percent s colon percent s so we remember when we worked through that in our putting it all together now what we can see is if we have that string and then the other string and we do a couple of replacements a couple of replacements deep we can actually make that happen now to save myself some time i have changed here and i'm actually using some variables now you may not actually understand exactly what a string variable is at this point. That's okay, we'll learn about it in the next section. But what you can see here is that each of these is just representing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and a horizontal line is just a bunch of X's to match. So instead of dashes, I'm gonna do X's. Our grid data string is the pattern that contains this string, a number colon number colon number. And our other pattern is going to be our line. So basically we have for every grid data that we encounter, we're going to want to make a printf statement, which contains that other pattern, percent %s pipe, percent %s pipe, percent %s. And then we'll just replace each one of these percent %s's with another format. Here, instead of using printf, because I'm not printing out, I'm using string.format, which is again, a little bit of a jump, but it's going to do the same thing to this combination that it would have done if we would have used system.out.printf. So this is the line grid data percent %s percent %s percent %s. So rather than having to write that every time, which we could have done just like this. That would work, but that grid data is just representing that percent %s colon percent %s colon percent %s, which just makes it a little easier to read. 
and also easier to modify if we need to change it in one place. We'll replace that grid data with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, then 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Then we have a horizontal line that we're going to print out. And then we're going to do, that's just the horizontal line, it's just the X's. We're going to do the same thing again. This is essentially going to be our grid that we're going to print out all of the different grids that we have. And that will basically print out our Sudoku grid. Now this looks like a lot more code, but what you'll see is that although it is a lot more code than just a bunch of print line statements, there's a lot more flexibility because I could easily change this number here to three. And I wouldn't have to find that in a string. I wouldn't have to do a bunch of different other replacements. And so this will actually be better code in the long run, even though there's more of it. And so when we run this, we can see again, our code is printing out just like we would expect. Our horizontal lines were changed to X's, which also helps us determine that we actually ran the right program rather than dashes. And we can see that everything printed out is expected. And again, if I wanted to change some of this around for some reason, it'd be really easy to do. I could take this string format, for example, and place it at the end. And then I could take this string format and place it up here. And again, I encourage you to play around with that. And so what we can see is that we've easily changed out that printout, but what that does is it breaks our Sudoku grid because now we have 912 and 912 and 678 and 678, which obviously isn't a good Sudoku. So we need to change it back to make our Sudoku actually work, but you can see how easy it is to change around some of the printout versus having to try to do that in here. Well, here we could have just changed out lines again. So we would have had to change this one to 912 and this one to 678, and it's a lot more work. But that basically wraps up our Sudoku grid printer for section one. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.